You're watching Mint Wide Angle and I'm Anandya Chakravarti. Could China have stopped the global coronavirus pandemic that has uh, made you and me now sit in our homes for the next 21 days? Could it have done that? To understand that, we are going to tell you a simple story of how it spread from the city of Wuhan. Uh, Wuhan is a city in central China. It is the capital of the Chinese province called Hubei. It is also the ninth largest uh, city in China in terms of population. It has a population of about 11 million people or 1.1 crore people. In Wuhan, there is a very popular seafood wholesale market called the Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market. The Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market is called seafood and yes, you get a lot of seafood there, but you also get vegetables, you get uh, traditional livestock that everyone uh, eats, which is chicken, maybe pork, lamb. But along with that, you also get a lot of exotic wildlife meats, which includes bats, civet cats, foxes, pangolins, and yes, also venomous snakes. Around the middle of November in Wuhan, doctors started getting cases of people with severe breathing trouble, many of them with pneumonia. And uh, this was a pneumonia that did not respond to any of the standard medical uh, protocols, which is giving antibiotics if these were bacterial pneumonia or giving antivirals. It just did not respond. And uh, what was common between all these patients was they were all connected to the Wuhan uh, Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market. There weren't too many patients initially, maybe one or two every day. And on a bad day, there would be about five patients. But by the middle of December, the numbers started rising quite fast. And in fact, on the 17th of December, for the first time, the number of new cases crossed the double digit mark. And doctors got worried that has SARS come again? So they started collecting samples from patients and tried to find out what was wrong with them. One such sample was collected from a 65 year old man uh, who was a delivery man in the Huanan seafood market. He had been admitted to Hubei's uh, central hospital and uh, on the 18th of December and on the 24th when his condition had deteriorated quite a bit doctors took samples from his lung they took out fluid and they sent it about thousand kilometers away to a genomics lab they sent it to vision labs in guangzhou and asked them to find out what was this virus which is causing this disease this is where things got a little strange because three days later on the 27th of December, instead of getting a report, they got a call from the lab. Someone called up and told the doctors that what they'd found was a new, a completely new coronavirus which had never been seen in humans before. And it was very close to the SARS coronavirus that had uh, afflicted China and parts of the world in 2002 and 2003. The report was uh, uh, communicated to both the provincial and central health authorities in China and effectively on the 27th of December China knew that there was a novel coronavirus which was causing infections in people and it was an incurable pneumonia by the end of the month there were several such samples which had been tested by many labs in China and they all confirmed the same thing that this was a novel new coronavirus very deadly it was similar to the SARS virus and this information was available to the Chinese authorities but it was kept secret it was kept within a very small group of doctors and medical officials it wasn't even told to doctors in the same hospital where this disease had been found now on the same day 27th of December when uh, Vision Labs had given its report another doctor Dr. Ifen of the same Wuhan Central Hospital. She was the director of uh, the emergency department. She took a sample from one of her patients. She suspected that there was something seriously wrong with her patient and she took that sample and sent it to Beijing to another lab. And when the report came, Dr. Ifen told in a later interview, which has actually been censored now, that she broke into cold sweat because the report said her patient, this one was a 41 year old patient, and the report said her patient had SARS. So she took a photo of the report, circled the word SARS, 
and she forwarded that photo to another doctor friend in another hospital. From there, it spread quickly within doctors in the medical community of Wuhan and it also landed back at Wuhan Central Hospital, this time with an eye doctor called Dr. Li Wenliang, who then posted it on a private WeChat group uh, where he had other doctors and he said that this is a SARS outbreak, protect yourself, wear protective gear so that you don't get infected. Dr. Lee probably didn't expect this uh, thing to go on to social media beyond that chat group, but a screenshot of Dr. Lee's uh, post went on to Weibo, which is China's own Twitter. It has about 500 million registered users and 310 million active users every month. And uh, from there, that post went viral. Uh, now, the ironical thing about this is that actually both Dr. Ai Fen's photograph, the report that she had got, and Dr. Lee's post were based on a report that was false. It was a wrong report. It was a false positive. It was a mistake made by the lab. There was no SARS in that patient, but this false report actually triggered a massive uproar amongst the public who wanted more information about the disease. It also led to the beginning of China's cover-up. So what happened? Dr. Ai Fen, who had uh, sent the sample, was summoned two days later on the 1st of January by her hospital's disciplinary committee and told that she needs to stop spreading rumors. She was admonished. And on the same day, on New Year's Day, the Hubei health authorities called up labs and told them, stop testing and destroy all the samples that you have. Two days later, on the 3rd of January, China's National Health Commission issued gag orders on all institutions saying that no information about this new disease could be published and everyone was told that if they have a sample, it has to be sent to a few approved labs and everything else has to be destroyed. Again, on the same day, on the 3rd of January, Dr. Li, whose post went viral on Weibo, was summoned by the Hubei police and he was told that he has to stop spreading false information on the internet. And he was even threatened that if he continues to do that, he could be imprisoned. Now, the news of Dr. Li's punishment was broadcast on uh, China's national carrier, CCTV, which sent a message to all doctors that they'd better keep mum about it and not talk about it. This is perhaps the reason that there was a sudden drop in the number of cases that were being reported in the first few weeks of January. Now, look at these numbers. Uh, from the 17th of December, when the first uh, double-digit increase in cases happened in uh, Wuhan, till the end of the month, which is about 14 days, the daily rate of increase of novel coronavirus cases was about 13%. And uh, by the 1st of January till the 22nd of January, which is three weeks, the rate of growth of cases was just 2%. This is a clear case of under-reporting where doctors probably got scared and didn't report new cases. In fact, the cover-up was uh, so absurd and one could call even sinister that on 11th of January, uh, the Wuhan authorities declared that the earlier numbers were over-reported, overestimated, and the actual numbers are just 41 cases. So here are the things to remember. On the 27th of December, Chinese authorities knew that they had a new coronavirus, a deadly coronavirus similar to SARS on their hands. Four days later, they declared to WHO that the disease that was spreading in Wuhan was unidentified and it was controllable and preventable. Estimates suggest that on the 1st of January, after China told WHO that there was Nothing to worry about the new disease. 175,000 people left uh, Wuhan. That's only on one day, 1st of January. For the first time on the 9th of January, China finally admitted that the disease was being caused by a new coronavirus. But even then, people were deliberately misled. They were told that this does not spread from human to human. There's no evidence to show that. Doctors were being told that they don't need to wear protective gear. Dr. Fen later said in her interview that she had to tell her staff in the emergency department to wear a protective jacket 
under their doctor's white coat so that hospital authorities didn't know that they were protecting themselves. It is finally only on the 20th of January that one of China's leading experts on respiratory diseases said in a television interview that this does transmit from person to person and it is very infectious. By then, people had already started dying. And two days later, Wuhan was put under a complete lockdown. By then, estimates suggest that 7 million people had left Wuhan between the 1st of January till the 22nd of January when it was put under lockdown. By then, the first case had already been reported in Bangkok and also in the US in Washington state and local outbreaks were seeding in Beijing and Shanghai and in other Chinese cities. Just imagine what would have happened if China had acted sooner and not tried to cover it up. If only after it got confirmation on the 27th of December, it had locked down Wuhan right then, then it is possible that you and I would have been out there right now, out on the road and not sitting in our homes for the next 21 days.